it is 10 a.m which means my first event is actually already starting which is like so fast Derek and I were just talking and hanging out for a minute so I almost completely missed the start of this event it is a YouTube live so I've just got to figure out how to get to it and uh we're gonna make breakfast and watch the D20 Dames live podcast recording. So come with me. Let's uh, let's watch this together. Enjoyed ourselves. Um, we are an actual play, family friendly D and D podcast. Uh, I'm Kat Kruger. My pronouns are she and her, uh, and I am the dungeon master here. Um, I think what we'll do first is go around the table, uh, the virtual table that is, and have our players introduce themselves before we get started. Um, hey Derek. Yep. So you want corned beef hash for breakfast? Yep. Um, how do I make it? Uh, you... Cause like, it's either mushy, like it always stays mushy, it's always cat food. Yep. But I could cook it until it's crispy, but that feels like it's too long. Yep. So. So just before it gets crispy, yeah. It's a little bit dry air. That's what you want. You want it hot and like just the beginning of the crisp, but not actual crisp. So you gotta like merge your soul with the spiritual ideal of what it is. And then you become one with the corn beef hash and you know when it is ready with a capital R. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait, are you wearing a Gen Con shirt? I am. Why? Because uh, table takes will be on later. That's right. Derek runs a show. I mean, he runs many, many shows. But one of the best ones is a Friday Night RPG. He ran on Gen Con, uh, Gen Con's channel that is currently not active. But the second best one is a news show. So if you want to get tabletop news because you can't find it anywhere else because nobody makes a goddamn summary of it, Derek does. <laughs> Derek does. And he's a wonderful host and he runs a news show with... Emma Larkins and with Banzai and with Christian Doyle. It's a really great way to get all of your gaming news and it is every Friday at 2 p.m. Yeah. Pacific. For like, yeah, Pacific. It have to be pineco. It can Aha! be anything. Yes. Lara, exactly right. Exactly right. Pine cones are just, you know, the, the, the raw currency that we could use, of course, but no, we could collect other resources and, uh, and trade in their value. Yeah. There's like, other, there's like other birds. currency exchange options. Doing yeah, fish, animal Mr. Trash. Mr. Pot takes um, yeah. a whole bunch of different types of um, items. Branches, rocks, um, fish, insects. So, uh, Riot wants to look around. Do they seem to have some sort of, I don't know, a fantasy radio flyer or anything? Like um, some type of wagon around them or a cart? And I'm going to... Uh, try to uh, sweep, sweep the viney legs with uh, my uh, the low swing of my quarter staff. Hey Derek, I almost feel like you know the way physical Gen Con is a place for figuring out what games you want to play in and what because there's you you can play any game in the world pretty much. So I think like it's a really great place to find out what games you might like because there's no commitment of buying it. You just buy a ticket. And I feel Gen Con Online is almost the same, but for podcasts or live shows, mm -hmm. where it's like, I I don't want to commit to having to download a big podcast. So how about I just like watch these 50 live shows and see what I care about. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that was an interesting switch mm -hmm. in my brain. What happened? Did I miss him? Jake Eller as Guts from Berserk. Best use of EVA foam. Tiffany Oaken as Steampunk Tinkerbell, best mashup costume. Those were our three honorable mention winners. Uh, all really awesome costumes, so it was uh, cool to have a chance to. Oh my God, Jordan's adorable! Um, so next up uh, on our program, um, we're going to look at uh, each of the finalists uh, for best in show. Uh, they each won uh, in their particular category, um, and then uh, they've each made a uh, about a one minute video. Uh, for us to watch. So uh, here we go. Solomon Love as Rockstar Foxy, best child costume. This is Rockstar Foxy. During quarantine, the artist started learning how to do cosplay costumes. 
As you can see, his jaw can move. He felt no hot glue, tape, um, even tissues for the specks in the eyes. I love it. As well as some fabric straps to do the eye patch, as well as help the jaw move. That's awesome. Seder as Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon. Best professional costume. Ooh. Hi, my name is Ely Chan, and I'm cosplaying Mahmoud from the manga Shokoku no Altera. Melissa Andrews as Sister of Battle. Best game character across Oh, Derek. By Bolter Shell, Flamer Burst, and Melted Blast, the mutant, the heretic, and the traitor alike are cleansed of their sin of existence. Evan Braun as the Witch King of Angmar. Best fantasy costume. Who's the Witch King of Angmar? Introducing Leah Kupta, an original character designed for a live action role playing in the Star Wars universe. Leah Kupta stands exactly seven feet tall, blending brown, orbit, and blondes is inspired by nature. The moment you've all been waiting for. We've counted up all the votes uh, and we're ready to announce uh, the best in show winner. So uh, maybe give me a drum roll, maybe just, um, I don't know, type, type drum noise uh, into the chat over and over again uh, for a minute while I slowly for a minute. the envelope from the inside. Uh, the winner uh, for Best in Show for the Gen Con oh, he's beautiful. is Melissa Andrews uh, as Sister of Battle. Yay! How's your uh, roast beef hash? Brown. No, like, tell us. Uh, I, yeah, I've never tasted anything in my life that tasted more like the color brown. Um, do you recommend it? Like, would you have it again, or are you like? It wasn't bad. Kind of like, it, it was. It was kind of like corned beef hash, but browner, roast beefier. <laughs> and it looks like I have a little bit of a break, so I'm gonna go outside and water the plants. Hey, I just wanted to come on here and uh, Gen Con's gonna end soon ish because of time zones. I'm sorry, I have not. I wanted to first of all apologize for my hair because I've not made any effort with hair or makeup all weekend, and usually I do, and I really enjoy it. But the pain in my shoulder and not being able to lift my arm up makes that difficult. <clears throat> Plus, I've had a hard weekend, so I'm just not in the mood. Hey, kitty. Um, but I wanted to give you a little post-con moment and kind of let you know what I liked and didn't like. So, the good and the bad and the ugly. <clears throat> so, the great and the things that I loved were... How the Gen Con squad stream was able to kind of um, elicit some emotions and feelings like walking through Gen Con. Where I would just see things pop up and I could easily go to that stream and be like, wow, cool thing um, that I never knew existed before. Cool company, cool people, wonderful, wonderful cool things that I hadn't known existed before. Um, also, I've noticed that a lot of the streams have um a variety of people of color and um and oh my brain and uh different races and uh genders and just a whole variety of people so i thought that was excellent work um what else went really well like i mentioned earlier it felt like there's just 
so much to do, so much variety that um, you feel like you're missing out on other things, which is the major feeling you get at Gen Con because you cannot do everything. So, um, so it's cool in that sense that it feels bigger than what you could experience on, you know, by yourself. And that's kind of one of the enjoyment feelings that I have about Gen Con. Yeah, those are those are some of the things I thought were excellent. What was my favorite experience? I really enjoyed running an event on Tabletopia. I wish it gone a little smoother, so next time I would just prepare more. I enjoyed the burlesque show. I thought that was fun. The most favorite thing that I attended was the Double Clicks concert with Nerdy. Um, Nerdy is a recent discovery of mine since Gen Con, and his music is excellent so um yeah that that was the highlight and then the other thing i loved was the opening ceremony so that was just an excellent feeling of togetherness and um they did an excellent job with the opening ceremony and then the things that i didn't really like or that were neutral and i feel like need work are um the cosplay contest i was really hoping to get the feeling of the costume walk and I didn't feel like that would be impossible to set up. But in the end, they just showed like five costumes and then picked a winner. Um, but I know they got a ton of submissions. So I would love if they had put together a video of either stills or videos of everybody in costume. Just random people, people submitting for the competition. My experience of... The togetherness feeling at Gen Con. That's what I need to work on as a person. Or maybe Gen Con needs to find out ways to create more opportunities for something like that. So, that's in the middle. <laughs> that's mostly my mistake and not Gen Con. Um, so, I actually felt like the opening ceremonies, the sentiment that David Hoppy um was able to bring across was just that feeling of being united and going through this together and it sucks but we are trying our best made me really like tear up and understand and feel a connection to gen con and everybody who attends it but i didn't see that um carry through as much because of the types of events i chose to play in so <clears throat> none of my friends attended gen con this year except for one and the ones that did we attended Gen Con with a flyer fly drinking songs together, but it wasn't together. We just both watched it at the same time, but we never connected. So eh, there's that. And I didn't play uh, really any events that were with other people participating in a game. So all my events were spectator events where there's no interaction between me and anyone. And that's my mistake. If I played a couple of more role-playing games or board games, um, I would have gotten that connection to people, right? Bad things. Uh, time zones are a thing. Ugh, I missed one event. Uh, I was lucky that due to time zones, I just got one hour off. Um, but being able to either, either they put a timer beside my event that's like a countdown to the time that it starts, or they show an event in my local time zone. Um, or they have a button that allows me to add an event to my calendar. And just puts it on my like Outlook calendar for me. And, and, and obviously the right time zone. I think that those three things would be excellent. <laughs> or any one of those three things would be excellent and improve my experience at Gen Con. Um, the Looking Glass, I think, is what the vendor hall is closed. I never went to it once. I went to it one time to show you guys um, how it looks and works. But it does not really at all make me feel like I'm in an exhibitor hall. I didn't know what to look for. I didn't know what to click on. And the exhibitor hall is such a huge portion of my experience at Gen Con. And I don't feel like the looking glass really did anything to allow me in a creative way to look at what those vendors had. The dance party. I didn't love that. Um, I don't really understand it. Um, I can show it to you, I guess. But yeah, it's just um, it's just a Discord server that you go to, and uh, you post a dance gif in it. 
I don't know. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. But. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to. What I expected them to do. But I figured maybe it would be like a live stream. With people like goofy dancing. Um, it was a definitely. A weird gen con. Where I could do my gardening. Take care of my cats do chores saved a ton of money since i didn't go to the exhibitor hall ever didn't have a hotel didn't have to buy lunches didn't have to fly anywhere so there's a lot of benefits to having this thing be online um and i bet there's a ton of people that can't go to gen con and this is a way for them to do it and i think that's excellent i was worried about how this was gonna go right they didn't have much time to pull all of this together you know they had what a few months maybe and um what they did is truly excellent um you know bringing a show like this to life giving it a really really amazing feeling of being like a drink on is just is so incredible and i'm so impressed with everybody and uh yeah i think a lot of people were worried that it would be this is not real gen con so i can't go to it i won't go to it it's just gonna make me sad and upset and i get that you know i i was worried that it was not gonna be real gen con and we have to be honest with ourselves and realize that real physical gen con can't be exactly the same as when it is online because it's not physical but it is a different version of gen con and i'm not saying it's better or worse i don't think the two can be compared but they did an excellent job creating the experience of gen con over the internet okay i'm gonna get off my soapbox and uh watch closing ceremonies shortly i really hope that all of you all had a wonderful time at gen con online or if you're watching this back from future years, I don't know if Gen Con Online is still a thing, but I hope you enjoyed a vision of what it was when it happened. Um, or if you didn't get to attend it this year and you're watching this because you're curious of how it went, um, I hope you enjoyed my version of how things happened. And uh, yeah, I, I will see you all next year if I don't make another outro. Well, no, I will. I'm gonna. I'm gonna bring Derek in at the very end. Hey. Hey, what's that? Is this, what are you doing? This is what she does when she wants to get pet. Oh, this is roast beef hat. So I did say I was just going to show you guys the dance party. It is in uh, Discord and it is somewhere in here. It's a Discord called Dance Party. And I guess there's a dance party chat. Oh, and I guess it ended. That's it. But from what I understand, the dance party is dancing gifts. I just, uh, people, people are enjoying it apparently, I just, I don't understand it. Uh, people who run events, uh, ticketed events at Gen Con, even Gen Con Online, only get paid when those tickets are turned in. And the way you turn a ticket in is you go to your event, let me show you. You go to your events, uh, whoop, 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 whoop. Uh, you go to your event that you had, let's do this one right here. I just went to table takes uh, right up here. I have a ticket for it. It says, give your ticket to the event host and you've attended now. Table takes, if they were, if this was a paid ticket would be getting paid for that event. Good job. Uh, and the programming was fantastic. Um, we, we made a, a big effort to bring more, uh, more people of color into the stream. Uh, and I think that's had great results and really good stuff that, that, that came out of as a result of that. Speaking of uh, Gen Con going forward, um, what can you tell us about where Gen Con is going to, what's going to happen next year? 
what, what do we do next? I gaze into my crystal ball here. Yeah, I got to share the ball with us, David. Yeah, well, look, I can tell you in the short term, uh, one of the things that we know we're going to do right away is that we're going to keep the Discord community uh, alive. We had such a great time with everybody on Discord. So uh, over time, we're going to evolve what is the Gen Con Online Discord to become you know, a Gen Con community Discord. Uh, you know, place where people can get together and, and organize games and to talk and connect and basically stay connected to the Gen Con community. So um, it'll be, the, the team's going to be winding down here and taking a little bit of a breather over the next couple of weeks, but that's going to continue. Um, and then we're going to keep working on building hey, that out. In the short run, there will also be, um, uh, we're going to put a Gen Con Memories channel up so that if you have uh, memories of things that you did during Gen Con Online that you want to share. It's over. Yep. Are you sad? Are you happy? How do you, how does this feel? Like, like is, yep. for me, it's a little sad, but I didn't have that connection with all my buddies. And I, I feel like now I can just go back and continue talking to them in the same way we did throughout Gen Con almost. Mm -hmm. So I'm not feeling that separation, physical separation that I usually have. How do you feel? Uh, well, I mean, you know, it's all the emotions. I've been working just about every day for two, three months, four months. Probably longer. I would say since March. Yeah. So we've been, we've been working almost every day since then. Uh, and to see it finally come together is great. Um, and to also now just be able to be like, great, uh, I'm going to just do nothing is fantastic. Yeah. How do you think it went? Like, how's... Overall, really, really good. Everybody responded very well. People got in their games. I love you. Thank you. Love you, too. Thanks from everybody watching. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all for showing up. Bye. Bye. Jackon Online is now powering down. Thank you for attending, and we hope to see you in 2021. I guess it's very final, Derek. Because normally there's a wind-down period after, right after Gen Con. I'm sad because all my friends are leaving, but we're still in Indy for like two more days, right? And I know we're going to go to the barbecue place for dinner. No, we're going to go to St. Elmo's yep. Steakhouse. Yep. I, ain't got, getting... I ain't got none of my shrimp cocktail. <laughs> I ain't got my easy style steak. Uh, so what we do that. This? We go to the Dead Dog and we have fun with our friends. And then the next day we go to, go to the barbecue place and we go to Jack's Donuts. And we do Gooderstein Game Time. It's like, he's like, Gen Con's over, see you next year. And he just like pulled the plug <laughs> and it's like, pff, pff, done. And I'm like, but I'm still here. What, what is this like our equivalent of Gooderstein game time? Sure. What have you got? Uh, chicken wings and hot sauce. How was the sauce actually good? Yeah. Okay. What's so good about these wings? Huh? Oh, uh, they are not breaded, which is impossible to find uh, out one? here until just recently. It's like this. And where they're a staple where? Like on the East Coast, every Chinese delivery place has them. Huh. And they're just crunch crispy and nice? Yeah, like they're not super crispy. Just the skin's crispy. And then we got some Thai food to wind down. What are you? What are you? <laughs> what is this new thing you're doing?